Hello, ladies, and welcome to Woman to Woman podcast. Woman to Woman has created a space to uplift, inspire, and motivate every woman on her wellness journey towards her authentic self. So get ready. Let's talk. I'm your host, Denise Hanks and Lawrence. I have two wonderful guests with me today, uh, coming from London, UK, and one in Scotland. Ladies, wave. Hey, I'm excited. Hey, <laughs> Thanks for having us. My friends, these are my international sisters, and I love them. We have Absolutely. conversations just randomly, just uh, really empowering and impactful conversations where we end up leaving a, the phone calls and we're like, wow, wow, did we just enter a master class? Yeah. <laughs> so today I'm excited because. Um, it is Black History Month in different parts of, of, of um, the United Kingdom. And I just wanted to get a perspective because in America, we have Black History in February. And so uh, Zari, which I'll allow you guys to introduce yourself after a while. Zari, you're in Scotland and Belle, you're in route now to... London. London, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Val, I know you're in route, so we want to get you in as fast as we can. What's it like? What is what is what is Black History? How is that celebrated in the UK? Um, so it's celebrated in lots of different ways, but the main theme is education, is is highlighting the the backstory to us as a community and um to kind of taking the focus of of our present troubles, I guess, in some ways, and, and, and looking back at where we actually have come from, um, because there is so much highlight, there's so much highlighted about our present situation and the in inequalities, and often members of the black community can almost feel like victims all the time, not realizing that they come, have a, a history that is so full of wealth and so much to be actually proud of. We stand on the shoulders of great people. So it's a time of educating different forums, whether it's through art, whether it's through music, through um, uh, now in this climate with the pandemic, a lot of kind of online events are happening as well. So you'll be able to join various conferences and um, have different kind of debates. There'll be um, shows on t television. So there's a lot of things that go on in different forums. Um, I think it's largely led by the arts. Okay. But, um, but, but even on an intellectual um, uh, basis, there, there will be discussions, but those usually tend to be things that are more on TV or radio. But visually, you will walk down the road. Um, even um, near where I live at Portobello Road, you will see images celebrating black history and, and what our, what our um, joint kind of background is and why we have so much to celebrate. It takes our eyes, I, in some ways, off our present struggles, which I think is really important as well, because you can often think that that's all you are. Mm -hmm. and, 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 I, and I like the fact that it doesn't just highlight it to us, but to other members of our community, to, to be able to, to honor those of us who are of um, um, African or Caribbean descent. Great. Now, Zari, we'll jump right over to you. What is Black History? How is it celebrated there in Scotland? Okay, so in Scotland, is much the same as what Christabel has shared. I come from a slightly different background, so I, I would see more of the picture from government level down. Um, I used to work in race politics, and so what I would see there was a greater engagement with politicians, especially during that time, because they would be more open to conversations. So you would find things happening at the Scottish Parliament, as it was then. Um, you would find things going on in the schools. As she said, education. There would be a lot of political conversation regarding how do we move forward. But it wouldn't just be on the basis of dealing with Black communities. as We see BAME, Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic, um, communities. Um, it would be about how do we integrate because it was so much more, especially in Scotland. Scotland has a history with sectarianism, which is with the Catholic, you know, mm -hmm. Protestant. So it was, they had to be very intentional about black history and it was normally led from within different communities. So when they say black in the, in the UK, what they generally, they mean it generally or they did up until quite recently across all ethnic minorities. It was, it was a political term. It wasn't 
the, the, the brown skin color. They've now changed it to BAME. But now, so now when we're talking about Black History Month, Asians still participate, but they're celebrating the history of the slave trade and things like that. So they're looking at these things, they're correcting maybe ideas that Britain didn't have anything to do with it, Scotland didn't have anything to do with it. So in our major city, Edinburgh is our capital city, but Scotland is, and Glasgow is seen as the capital of Scotland. Whenever you, if you don't go to Glasgow, you have not been to Scotland. And right. a major reason is because most of our historic, anything that's happened historically happened there. So when you go to streets, you have street, street names that are named after slave owners. And they are ports from where the slaves came in. And so for people to understand that, they're actually looking at changing things. Then we have things like Mandela Square, because they're, then there were big proponents. And it's, it's so funny how we have this kind of crooked foundation. And it's like they're trying to, every year, it's like, well, how do we correct this more? How do we adjust this? And as Chris said, how do we celebrate those who are in our communities that have come from different place and have, are making Scotland change and become something else? Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Completely different from us in the U.S., which you know that for a fact. <laughs> 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 so with that said, right, and it being Black History and you girls being uh, part of my sisterhood here, I wanted to invite you to this platform. And I'll begin with Belle. And the reason why I say that is because oftentimes we don't know how to celebrate each other, yeah. right? Um, thank God it's not like that with us in this group. But, you know, it's, it, it speaks of, of where you are. When you're confident in who you are, when you've identified who you are, you have no problem celebrating somebody else. And so I invited you both on here. I'm just going to ask you to introduce yourself, Belle, and, you know, your profession, what you're doing, and where you are. And we just want to celebrate you on today to say it's Black History, and I'm celebrating a powerful Black woman that's contributing to society. So go oh, ahead, wow. and introduce yourself, please. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Okay, um, so my name is Christabel. I am a, a doctor. Um, my area of speciality is general practice, and I've worked across civilian and uh, military um, sectors. So I'm just coming to the. I've just come to the end of um, several years working for the Army um, British Forces in Germany. And um, I'm very, uh, my area that I love is I just, I'm passionate about education and I'm passionate about empowering people to take ownership and responsibility for their own health. And um, I've kind of realized it in, in my practice that many people don't know about their health or don't know, know about their disease and may just be taking things without really understanding or doing their own research. And they don't challenge their providers to make sure they're giving them the best options. And um, at this particular moment, what I'm addressing is just focusing also on the, uh, on the health inequalities that the, the Bain community, as, as um, Zari mentioned earlier, um, in, in basically not being empowered to take ownership of their health. So there's a lot of conditions such as high blood pressure, diabetes that are rampant. And, um, and I've just found that people don't know. So at this particular juncture I'm, I'm stepping more into public speaking doing workshops one-to-one -one sessions to to help to um, partner with people to to partner with their own health mm -hmm. and and get better outcomes so yeah that's um, where I am at the moment uh, with with uh, my journey so it's a wow. big change from the kind of nine to five if you like to call it that um, general practice and stepping out of that the four walls the, the traditional four walls of general practice yeah Wow. But you, do you find that um, for most people, and I know for like, I know a couple of people that I talk to and they're now being aware of, becoming aware of their, their health or being concerned yeah. about it. And I think sometimes it's because of tradition, our culture, you know, where we're from, like, you know, whether you're from the Caribbean or not, it's, oh, you don't go to the doctor. We'll fix yeah. something. We have something to, we have something to remedy that. There's no yes. need to go to the doctor. And then later on, oh, but I've always had this meal. I've always ate this, you know, and we're not taking care of ourselves because I'm learning that myself, you know, mm -hmm. as 
as I'm getting older, as I'm getting mature, I should say, (laughs) you know, and I'm learning certain things like, wow, you could have prevented this with knowledge. Do you find that a lot? Yes. And I think um, part of the reason for that, that that I found, and there's many, but two of the main things is the, the, the strategies, the traditions that they had for their own health worked perfectly in the culture they originated in. But right. now you come to a new area, you come to a new culture. And, and what we know is that when people move from one area to another, they start to pick up the same incidence of disease as the people from that area. So what you used to do no longer works quite the same way because now you're eating differently, you're living differently. As much as you're having your maybe Caribbean meals, your African meals, the ingredients you're using are processed. They're not the way that you would have got them before, the way you would have got them directly from a market with fresh produce. Now, um, and, and Zari will know this, uh, that there's, um, you can get certain foods in a box. But in Ghana, they would be pounding it. Like they'd be pounding yam or pounding mm-hmm. plantain. But you, you're, you go to London, you go to a market, you get a box, and it's all powdered in there, and you add water and stir it in a pot. Yeah. So we're ingesting different types of foods. It might have the same name, but it's yeah. not the same thing. Mm-hmm. So what you used to do, that work just doesn't work because of where you are now, where you're situated. And the, um, another thing I've noticed is there's just a general mistrust. And if you ask the average person, they probably won't be able to tell you why they don't necessarily trust what their doctors are saying. But I, I did find when I was in the US that um, when um, people found out that I was a doctor, they, you know, they'll say, are you a real doctor? You know, it was, it was always a thing that they would say to me. And then they would start asking me questions. They would literally say, my doctor said this, is it true? And mm-hmm. in kind of just researching what the, the, the relationship has been for members of the black community in health, you, you find out things like, for example, in the US, they used to intentionally not treat black men with syphilis just to see the mm-hmm. different stages. Oh, yeah. And, and so you would essentially allow them to get unwell just to do just for a science experiment. Mm-hmm. And so there's an inherited mistrust and people might not understand where it's coming from. All they know is they don't really trust their doctors. They can't explain it, mm-hmm. but it's something that they've inherited from people before who had bad experiences. So yeah. yes, I do think that, that um, those things need to be addressed to enable us to take, once again, to take ownership and to be healthy with knowledge. Sorry. Introduce yourself, sweetie. Introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm still reveling in who she is. And she's like, <laughs> also, I'm just like, gosh, I love this girl. I love you guys. Oh, <laughs> <I> love you. <laughs> so my name is Zarita. I used to say Zaritza, but Zarita Asante. And I am in this season, I am manifesting as a fashion designer. I am wholeheartedly a fashion designer with different elements but yes I'm a fashion designer about to launch my new brand and yeah it's been a journey I have many different things I've pulled in but the Lord called me to this to fashion he said start at fashion many years ago I sat because I was just at a crossroads in my life and I was like Lord what do you actually want me to do and I think sometimes I think we should be checking in often, but I was at a point I had just been offered to literally take over the company I'd been working with and it was great and it would have looked good, but something in my heart just wasn't sitting well. And I was in Ghana and I was happy and I was like, I'm never going back to the UK. That's it. I'm here. I was so happy. Yeah, I had no intention of coming back to the UK. Uh, I was living the dream, but something just wasn't right in my spirit. And I said to the Lord, I, I sat. And I thought it would take one day. And he said, lock yourself in. It was three days. And he didn't start speaking until the third. The first day he told me to put my pen and paper down and just worship him. And the third day he started speaking to me and he gave me an overview of what my life would be from then forward. And it was huge. And there was this tiny bit and it was fashion. And he said, start there. And wow. that was literally seven years ago. And it's, it's, it's now, it started, Zari, I registered it last year, but it's starting this year. <laughs> That's all right. So seven years ago, now eight, the number of new beginnings. Yes. That's all right, girl. We talking about that earlier. It was just like, oh my word. From when he spoke, 
Uh -huh. to is now man I was just like oh my goodness and I was so happy because I felt like 2020 was the year but I'd registered last year and I just found out just a few days ago I was about to renew my licenses getting ready for launch and they told me it was registered in England but having it registered in England means it isn't Scottish but I'm in Scotland and that's part of the story and so I was like it can't be that so I literally had to I'm winding down and reopening in Scotland so it will be established 2020. And that's for us, the year of new beginnings, 2020. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, so. Wow, I'm so excited. So, Belle, I know you're traveling, and um, but I wanted to get focus a lot on um, Zari today. And yes. Belle, I know this is your friend. You speak so highly of her. And not only that, you've also had an opportunity to wear some of her designs. So. Yes. We're going to focus on her a little but I want to get an idea from you. Who is she? Oh, my goodness. Because the world is going such a big to know question. her. Listen, <laughs> the world is going to know her, okay? Yeah. And you have the privilege of saying, that's my friend. And yeah. I have the privilege of saying, that's my friend, too. So yes. You tell, let's tell them who she is. Who is Oh, that? my goodness. So let me, that's such a big question because she's so many things. But one thing I will say to her, and it's, a, it's literally the first thing that's popped into my, my, my head, is she's a servant. Mm. She has such a servant heart. And, I mean, without kind of going into the depth of everything, she's somebody who is loyal and committed. And because of, you know, she's the kind of person that because she is so diligent to serve, because she's so willing to have an open hand, even in her lack, she is constantly raised from glory to glory by the hand of the Lord. She's the kind of person that you can only say it is God. Mm. And that is the statement of her life that yeah. there are, there are things that you will see and she'll probably tell you as part of her journey that you're like, how did that happen? And, and all you can do when you look at her life is say, she is the evidence that there is a God because mm all the miracles, all the stuff that's happened in her life. I mean, she knows. I use her as a testimony all the time. It's literally his hand. It's literally his hand. Um, so I would say she's an absolute servant. And I mean, part of the reason that I thought it's so great for us to be celebrating her, celebrating Zari, is that it's particularly in this month, actually, in, in the UK, is that she's connecting our history to our present. So that in the very fabric of what she designs, you are wearing a story and you are wearing your story. Yeah. And even so, even with my, um, my, she, she designed my, my wedding dress. Yeah. She designed the dresses right. of my bridesmaids. Yeah. I mean, I wear, I wear her designs to work. And the great thing about it is that one, because of the way they look, they always provoke questions. And, and then I can tell the story behind the item but they actually have a story embedded. She'll tell you the, the materials that she uses, the textiles, they all speak. And I remember that there was um, a few years ago uh, when the, the Lord was just speaking to me about clothing, it was this thing of dressing from the skin up. And you literally are dressing history, in history, you're dressing in affirmation, you're dressing in confirmation that even if you don't know even if you're confused about your identity and you don't know who you are when you put on the on on the design it speaks into your identity yeah and we know that the lord um he he speaks in so many different ways and his word is life so even if you don't understand but you are doing things by principle they will work so it's so even for the the, the ignorant or the unbeliever or whoever, whoever wears a design, it is speaking into who they are. Yes. And I, and that's what I just love about, about her designs. I mean, I get to brag cause she's like, when she was, I'm like, oh, my sister made this, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's what she'll, um, when, maybe she'll, you'll, even what she's wearing, you can see it just provokes a reaction. And yeah. it's not just because they're such excellent designs. It's because it's a spirit led thing. Yeah. It's a God thing. And God can't pass by without there being exclamation. Yeah. So, so that's what I would say. So, yeah, um, I hope that wasn't too long. <laughs> hey, we could go on and on. Even tell us about what you're wearing today. Okay. This symbol says, Miwariwo in Chi. And that means I will marry you. 
but it's not, it's speaking to, because marriage is a covenant and it's speaking to what that means about commitment, Mm. you know, in anything you're doing, whatever you're called to, and it's exhorting us to commit because it's, it's never going to be easy. It's always going to be, we're supposed to be partnership. We're not supposed to be lone rangers in this life. And so it is that thing of reminding you that life is a journey and it's done in partnership. We first partner with him and we partner with others. And sometimes there's a disconnect in different places, but my hope is that when you wear these things, so I've been doing, I've been doing this series on Instagram where I was introducing the symbols to people so they could have an insight to what the symbols mean. There's so many things that we wear every day and we don't actually know what it means. We just like it. But yeah. just our liking it is talking about our spirit because we are drawn to things that there's a likeness with. But sometimes we've been taught to like certain things. And without, you know, the word says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so I believe in that knowledge. The truth that you know shall set you free. But it's not just knowing the truth because we all know a lot of truth. It's the truth that we end up walking out. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I know that marriage is a commitment, it's a different thing to now being in a relationship with someone, whether it's marriage, whether it's business, whether whatever it is, whether it's friendship, knowing that it's a commitment. So that means ups and downs, we're going to traverse them together. It means that just because things are difficult doesn't mean we stop it. We are preparing for those difficulties because we know that's what happens. But in the difficulties, we're being refined. And so those are the kind of stories I want people to get from the clothes. I want them to be excellent because God wants them to be excellent. And that's what he said. It's about justice. Justice is our first thing. We're speaking to justice from the way we deal with people in the supply chain to the way we curate uh, fabrics, to the way we sell, to the people we speak to. All of it is about justice. And it's that Micah 6, 8, when it said he's shown you um, he's showing you, oh man, what is good. And the, the first part of that is to do justly. Okay. Yeah. And so that, that's the thing that's ringing through all of this. And he told me that these symbols were his wisdoms, but some of them have been perverted. And isn't that the story? Because that's what happened in the fall. And it's that way he said that it's going to be like an undercover agent. That's what it's going to be the yeast literally working through, working through the culture and people are going to love it. They're going to be like, oh, I love that. They're not going to know what it's about. And meanwhile, the Holy Spirit's going to get access to them and start speaking into their lives, start speaking into their situations, start speaking into their sectors, start speaking into these different areas because we're supposed to be infiltrating the systems and taking over. And you think fashion can't do anything? Oh, yes, it can. Because what you're wearing is speaking something. So what you, you go into, you, you're going into an engineering firm and you think you're just wearing something sharp as a guy, oh no, the Lord entered in with you. And it's like, wherever you've given him access, he's going to take that and it's going to start speaking into that. And so that's what it is. It's so much, it, it, but it has to start with the excellence. And so the Lord has come at, cook, he's, he's exhorted me. He's, he's given me that commission to do this and to do it excellently, which means I had to learn from the bottom up because it's things I didn't know, which is why the journey is taking a while. But as someone said the other day, and I hope I'm not taking too long to say oh, this, but he said, we spend so much time and I've been one of those who was guilty. By the time I, I turned 22, I wept because I thought I've wasted my life. I was yeah. 22. And the person said, you know what? Stop beating yourself up. God knows your timing. And they said, consider this. And they talked about Usain Bolt. I did not know this. Usain Bolt in all his Olympic runs ran less than five and a half minutes. But he spent 20 years training for those five and a half minutes. Absolutely. Jesus walked 30 years for a three-year ministry. Abraham was called at 75. Yes. And that's when he started walking out. And then he had that little issue. So the time thing, I'm so, so not bothered by that anymore. I'm like, as long as you're able to work out everything you need to work out in me, whatever it needs for this to work, because I know it's tied to people, do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. Because I'm not leaving this earth with anything undone. I'm not leaving this earth with anything undone. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah. And that's what this label is. (laughs) 
Oh my goodness. What, what a beautiful way to introduce it. I agree with a lot of things that you just said. Definitely agree with it. One, I see that you, you are intentional. Uh, the symbol, the, the, the combination of entwining everything together, it's intentional. It's yes. directly a message from God. And then it's intentional. It's intentional because you're putting in his word there. You're, you're yeah. making it to, hey, it's going to cause a, a, a conversation, right? A conversation. Yes, absolutely. And I, I, it makes me look different at fashion. You know, you hear people talk about wearing that power suit, you know, or going in that white suit or that black suit or something of that nature. And it says that when you wear it, it gives you the sense of power or, you yes. know, we're black because it makes us look slimmer. So it has some meaning, but now you put a different spin on it. Even from what you said, people will recognize this is true. Clothes are speaking. They have been speaking. Someone makes a decree. People buy into that. Some people will, some people won't. I'll wear black because that will make me slimmer. That is a word that was put out and we've received that and we've started and, and we've, we've bought things based on that word. So sometimes you don't even know, but you're mirroring what you see. And so if you can be intentional about what you, when you go into a room and Christabel has a story, she, she had an interview years ago, I won't tell it, but she might tell another time or today. And she, the Lord told her which shoes to put on. That shoes was, were, those shoes were critical to the outcome afterwards. They were part of the conversation. So God does care what we wear. And I don't mean cover yourself from head to toe. Right. I mean, he's intentional. And so that's why he needs me to be intentional because that's what I'm putting out into this realm to cause change. When it leaves me, people are going to look at my systems and how I do things. And, that my, and in this day, actually, because when you're talking about Generation Z, when you're talking, talking about the millennials onwards, they buy based on purpose. Yes. And the, the statistics show that. And so, and I think that us who are maybe the generations before, we're now thinking about, well, why am I buying that? And a time like this, when people are thinking about what am I using my money to spend on, you're going to have a, you're going to have to have a very good reason why someone should buy your product. It's, it has to be excellent. It has to have longevity. It has to be doing something different. And I, I think the Lord's woven that in. So intentional, absolutely. Yeah. Another thing you spoke about, um, that speaks profoundly for me is the fact that you said you want to deposit everything. And I'm a firm believer of that, that, you know, we've often heard it that the gravesite is the richest place in the, on earth. Yes. And it's sad that we say it and it has become a cliche for some people, but yeah. it's true to it because that's where a lot of dreamers are laid. Like they had dreams and creative ideas and inventive ideas, but were yeah. never able to fulfill them for whatever oh. reason. You know, whether yeah. it's the system, whether it's the fact that they didn't believe in the process yeah. and not, they were not intentional in their growth to yeah. get that potential. But for me, you know, it's the saddest thing to have your gravesite, you know, the tombstone read, okay, died at, um, died, buried at 80, but died at 20 because yeah. your dream died with you then. All the yeah. things you're going to do died yeah. with you when you're 20. Yeah. So, the fact that you are now walking into something new and you've accepted that call and you've accepted the gift and you're yeah. taking that gift and that talent, you're saying, God, this is unto you. You have gifted me with this. And to come with something so creative and the need to want to deposit everything that he's blessed you with in this earth. Yeah. It, I, I applaud you on that. Yeah. I, how yeah. do you stay on that track though? How do you stay? Because, okay. Fashion, let's be real. Is it easy to get into? Uh, I'll say yes and no. Yes, because you can make anything. If you're, if you're creative, you can sew, you can create things. But when you're talking about fashion, I think you mean like commercial, mainstream fashion where people see you and no, that isn't. Even to go and study fashion in this country, it's, it's, it's become a thing between the haves and haves not have not because unless you can afford you can go to university but you may not be able to complete because afterwards you have to get apprenticeships into different companies but you don't get paid for that you get maybe your allowance and that covers if you're in london that barely covers your rent so many people drop out and 
they'll just be somewhere doing their small thing. And there's nothing wrong with a small thing if that's your vision, but it has become, fashion has always been this thing of you have to conform. There are the greats and everybody knows them. You're Gucci's, you're Prada's, you're all those things. And they define, people distinguish you if you can afford them or you can wear them, if you can wear their, their, their top, label, the first line or the second line or the third line, all of this telling what your ability is financially. And, and in the UK, we're very much a class society. So different if you wear Burberry or if you wear any of these kind of things. So getting into fashion in that sense is very difficult. It's very difficult because it's very costly. And I'm starting with a capsule collection. And can I tell you, it would have been impossible for me to even get this far without the Lord and the support of people like Christabel, like she has supported me from beginning to end. My family have encouraged me. And it's funny coming from a kind of African background, having your degrees and things like that, usually they'd be like, you need to get back to what you're doing and be said. But they're, they're also, thanks be to God, they love the Lord. And for this one, they could see it was God. Right. And so fashion is not easy. It will not be easy going through. But one thing I'll say, and someone said to me, someone asked me the other day, isn't it really difficult? Because first you're black and Mm -hmm. now you're bringing this kind of fashion that isn't, you call it fashion, but here we don't really call it fashion. We, you know, it's ethnic, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, everybody has a difficulty story because we all have to navigate. If you told me that I was going to struggle, that I was part of a a small percentile at the beginning, it wouldn't have changed because it was God who told me to do it. It doesn't take any more of God for me to accomplish. It, It is difficult and I can acknowledge it is difficult and there are difficulties, but I'm not going to make it without God anyway. And with, and it's the word says wisdom answers all things. Well, I'm going to get wisdom from God. And he's going to bring, he's brought errands and hers alongside me. If you look at me and you look at my, my background or anything like that, you'll say that I'm destined to fail probably. But if you look at my DNA and what's really my background, the kingdom, I'm destined to succeed. I just have to stay in this spot and I have to, um, keep encouraging myself. And I would say that to anybody listening, because as you said, yeah. buried at 80, but died at 20. And it's because of false narratives, because nobody said it would be easy, but that doesn't change the fact. If you know this is in you and you wake up and that is what you're thinking about, no matter how difficult it is, if it's a dream given from the Lord, I say, dig in and push forward and just keep going. But fashion is difficult. And even right now, I'm coming in at the high end, the luxury end. And so people are kind of looking at me. I, I'm, I'm in a program with the bank, the biggest bank in Scotland. And, and they're really excited because I'm excited. But you can, you can hear that just silent narrative. It's like, yeah, but it's going to make it because luxury. You don't do that online. You have to have like a flagship store. People can come in because about the experience. They're going to get the experience because it's going to be a Holy Spirit experience. And everything I'm doing is backed up by the culture of the kingdom of heaven. That's what and and, we're, and I keep saying that because it truly is that. I wouldn't try this if it wasn't God because I don't have the pedigree in world terms, I don't have the pedigree to do that. It's not my background. It's not where I'm coming from. I love fashion, all right. But that is a place to break into. And the only way I'm going to break into that is the Lord goes before me. And so that's it. It is difficult, but that's what he said. So. <laughs> wow. wow. I love your faith. Oh my goodness. I love your faith in God. I love your faith and belief in your, in, in the gift that you have. Yeah. And- so gift to you because I think that's also important in branding, right? Even yeah. if you're witnessing, um, you're telling about Christ. If you don't believe in Christ, and you are like of assurance that okay, He is a healer, and you're question if He's a healer, then how you present Him will not be well received because it doesn't look like you have credibility here, honey. You, you but Did you, you know? speak so you know, with so much faith and, and belief in, yeah. in God, as well as within the gift that he's given you and your yes. brand itself. Yes, you yes. Say, hey, you may think I should come on in this way. And how is it possible? Hey, this is not something you do online, but you believe. Yeah. 
believe in your brand. You believe in what you're doing. Absolutely. Because you have that positive belief, you're pushing that energy out. I, yes. And it's going to show in the product that you produce. Yeah. Yeah. I, Yes, I yes, believe- absolutely. I, you know, as you were speaking, I just thought, of course, people will say that's a weird way, but do you know what? Taking over a whole city, Jericho, by walking around it once every day for six days, and, yeah. yeah, and then blowing your trumpets. And <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I'm just like, God, you can do whatever you, whatever way you want. I'm going to have a yes in my spirit. So you can partner with him or not. And so my partnering with him is ensuring that I read all the information I can get when it comes to business. I am in groups with different networking groups, people who have gone ahead of me, Christians, non-Christians, all of them. I'm getting all the information I can get downloading that, making sure that I'm excellent when it comes to the administrative part, learning what I don't know, going into the factory that are producing my clothes and learning the things I don't know, trying out things so that I know all the different parts so that I can speak to those things. And then the Lord, can, the Lord has given me a gift and the gift will make room. But the greatest gift I feel that he's given me is free will and humility. I choose because he tells me, be humble. He doesn't right. say, I'll give you humility. He said, be humble. How can we find you? How someone find you? You can find Zari, me, on Instagram is by dot Zari T Z or in the States T Z A R I by dot T Z A R I by Zari on Instagram and on Facebook without the dot by Zari. And yeah. our website will be launching when? L- website will be launching 12 12 2020 and that is www.byzari.com.